2023 was Denver International Airport's busiest year on record. It is busier than it ever was. While airline stocks have not recovered to pre-pandemic levels, passengers have returned in record-breaking numbers. We will end 2023 at much higher than our forecast at about 78 million passengers annually. So this has been a tremendous growth. The airport, which opened in 1995, was originally built to handle 50 million passengers per year. But now that number is expected to reach over 100 million per year by 2027. It went from the 21st busiest airport in the world in 2019 to sixth in 2023. Currently, we're running about 450 flights a day out of Denver. And that's to 175 different destinations, 10 different countries. United Airlines is Denver's biggest operator, followed by Southwest and Frontier. The Mid-Continent Airport has become United's biggest hub. It recently invested nearly $1 billion in Denver to add more gates, flights, destinations, and open the largest lounge in its network. 40% of our customers are local Denver, and it's a fast-growing city. We want to grow before 2030 to about 650 flights a day. CNBC got a behind-the-scenes look at United's Denver operations and explores how the airport and airline plan to keep up with demand. Denver is the third busiest airport in the United States and sixth in the world. Since 2019, it has added the most seats flown than any other airport with an increase of 17%. People have prioritized travel in such a way that we're seeing big numbers, and not just us, but all over the country. Denver is uniquely located in the middle of the country. 96% of flights in 2023 were domestic flights, and a little over 41% of total passengers were connecting to other destinations. The three big major airlines in the United States, United, American and Delta Airlines, they have multiple hub airports across the continent. But the ones on the east and the west coast specifically are focused on serving international connectivity, whereas those in the center are much more focused about domestic connectivity. And they fared much better during the pandemic and have continued to grow out from theirs. But it's been a noticeable feature that they bounce back quicker than, say, perhaps from some of the larger airports like JFK. The city of Denver has also been growing rapidly. From 2010 to 2020, the population grew nearly 20 percent. It's about room to grow. It's about economic investment in the area generally and more corporations moving into the area with the demand for, for air travel. We are an incredible economic generator for the state of Colorado, the largest economic generator in the state at about $36.4 billion. So our impact is very, very clear. We have 40,000 employees at this airport. The airport, which often deals with the longest wait times in the country, has big projects in place to prepare for 120 million passengers per year by 2045. The first thing that we're doing is redoing the terminal itself. And so we're expanding the Great Hall. We are putting in new security checkpoint areas. We have six runways. We're doing pre-environmental work on a seventh runway. We are looking at a new baggage system. We are doing early work on a consolidated rental car facility. Denver is a much newer airport compared to New York's JFK or Chicago O'Hare and is not capacity constrained. It is the largest airport in the U.S. by landmass with 53 square miles. But more importantly than that, I think it has the best of both worlds. You know, it has a really good legacy airline providing all of that mainline connectivity. And it also has a, a very successful and a very large low-cost airline that has been firmly established for many years. And between them, they, they offer an ideal range of connectivity from the airport. We have invested over a billion dollars in the past few years, and we're continuing with that investment. So our new gates, we're doing our Gate of the Future product, which is new seating, lots of electrical, new technology, and monitors. The thing about the United States that is very different to other parts of the world is that investment in airports is frequently a joint partnership between the airline and the airport authority and the city and the metropolitan area. Whereas in Europe, airport investment per se is made by the airport. As they think about what their growth looks like, we're thinking about how our growth looks like, and then we're sitting down on a regular basis 
to determine how we can meet in the middle, if you will, in terms of how it will benefit the, their passengers and the flying public out here. In the United States, the airlines have to take a much bigger share of that risk and that investment, but it also gives them the return. It's their asset to control. United clearly see an opportunity here that um, they can grow perhaps more effectively than they can in Chicago, or certainly on either the East or the West Coast in Newark and San Francisco, for example. Going out of Denver, we have 50,000 passengers on average. United employs roughly 10,000 people in Denver, with close to 850 in technical operations. This is the SOC, which is the Station Operations Control Center. It's the central nervous system of the operation. This is where all information is brought into us and uh, disseminated out to the proper departments for action. Every department is represented in the entire room, whether it's a passenger having an issue with a connection, crews timing out, or a maintenance problem. We can find out what anomalies are happening with aircraft by looking at either one of these screens very quickly. On the day we were there, a flight from Newark, New Jersey to Narita, Japan was diverted to Denver, but because the flight was rerouted, the crew timed out. So it's going to come into Denver, we're going to recrew it, we will service the aircraft just as if it's an inbound. If someone else is having a bad day, it is going to affect us because we do a lot of hub-to-hub -hub flying and our crews kind of get messed up then also. So if the crew's in Newark and they can't get out and they're needed for a Denver to Orange County, we have to have a plan in place. Newark, another hub in United's network, suffers from a lack of room to grow. The older airport only has two runways compared to Denver's six, but flies just as many customers. The airline had to cut flights in Newark this summer to reduce delays. Newark was designed a long time ago uh, for People's Express and 727 work, so the terminals themselves, the infrastructure, the gating situation is much, much different than Denver's. Denver lends itself to a very, very long terminal that simplifies taxi in and taxi out. Denver also has a, a lot of concrete to park airplanes. We're very constrained here with parking. Different airports have different operational strategies. In LA, there's not room to grow. We can get bigger on aircraft size, but we can't necessarily bring in a lot more flights. So it's a completely different strategy. In Denver particularly, we have room to grow. We have nice big new gate areas. We'll have 90 gates. Denver's second largest carrier, Southwest, has been expanding at the airport as well. It opened a $100 million maintenance facility as it also continues to grow. The growth in air travel is expected to double by 2040, from 4 billion passengers a year to 8 billion. We're going to hit 100 million much sooner than what we ever thought. Once we reach the 100 million passenger mark annually, that 36.4 billion uh, economic generation will go to 71 billion. The airport is also looking to grow the number of international flights, which only represents 4% of annual departures. We do have more global flying now than we did 10 years ago. We want to add more, but we've got to fix the customs facility that was designed for, you know, a 1990s schedule out of Denver. United is also looking to grow outside the airport. Last year, it bought more land to expand its Denver Flight Training Center, where it trains 12,000 pilots every year. The big challenge for every airport and the whole aviation sector is, you know, the, the big question of environmental impact, sustainability, being able to do these things effectively, making use of the assets as much as you possibly can, rather than just building concrete for concrete's sake. Another factor that we've seen, which has been quite interesting in the last two years, as we build out from the pandemic, is the shortage of skilled resources. Experts say the biggest challenges for the industry moving forward are the shortage of staff, pilots, FAA air traffic controllers, and aircraft delivery delays. We're projecting a lot of growth. At one point we were saying up to 700 by 2030, but now just with the delay in aircraft deliveries and some of the pilot issues, we're looking at about 650. But if the demand is there, we definitely want to continue to grow the hub. 